Hey everyone, uh, my name's Kelvin, and I'm going to quickly show you how you can make a mandala uh, just like this one uh, with Mandala Creator Sacred Geometry Edition. Uh, the first thing you want to do to get this started is to download that folder from Creative Market and then unzip it. Uh, inside you'll see a folder and a readme. Uh, this readme will have links to this video and some other videos and some more information uh, as well as my uh, online shop. And uh, inside the folder here is where we'll, uh, we'll find the actual add-on, so we'll open that. Uh, this add-on works with uh, Adobe Illustrator CS5, CS6, and then all the versions of Creative Cloud. Uh, in this demo, I'm going to use it with uh, Creative Cloud, but that's only because my uh, screen recording software doesn't work so well with CS5 uh, or CS6. So the first thing we'll do is open the template file. Uh, this is where we're going to make the mandalas. So I'm going to drag that into Illustrator. And uh, once that uh, template's open, it'll look just like this. And it has the brushes built in. Uh, so I'll go to Window and then Brushes to open those. Um, and then these are organized by complexity. Uh, so these little C ones, these are ideal for the center of the mandala. Uh, these are the S ones are simple patterns. Uh, and then on down the list. Uh, and I'll show you how to use each of these. Uh, so these, these brushes work with the template and the action scripts to make the mandala. So we'll load the action scripts next. Uh, so I'll go to Window, Actions, and uh, if you see any actions, here's some open from uh, last time. Uh, if you see any actions here, uh, you can close those actions or clear them. Uh, and then you can load actions by selecting this little menu in the corner again. Load actions. And then navigate to where you unzip that folder. So it'll be in here. And it's going to be one of these actions. And this is where you can choose whether you want a six-pointed mandala or an eight-pointed mandala. Um, in this demo, I'm going to do a six-pointed mandala, so I'll double-click that. Uh, and it should look uh, just like this. If it doesn't, uh, make sure button mode's on. So if it looks like this, uh, make sure button mode is on. There we go. And uh, the first script here, start new mandala, uh, this will just make a circle, a beginning of a mandala in the middle. Uh, and then while this is selected, you can select any one of these other patterns. Uh, and they all have a different look. Um, some of them have dotted lines, some of them don't. And I'll show you how to use the dotted lines uh, later on. Uh, so you can choose a center if you want, uh, like that. And then the basic process for building a mandala uh, would be to duplicate ring, um, just like that. And it'll create a copy of whatever is selected and put it behind. And then you can select a different pattern from the list while that new ring is selected. So I could select one of those. And even though these are organized, uh, like the C's are for centers and the S's for simple or whatever, you can use any of these patterns at any, any place in the mandala. And uh, this pattern, it's kind of a small pattern, so you don't see it. And that's why we have this grow ring script here, uh, or shrink ring. And this is how you can change the size of the individual rings. Uh, and then these combined with... Um, shrink pattern and grow pattern uh, will allow you to create unique rings in your mandala. So here I can grow the pattern. It's a six-pointed pattern. If I shrink it, it'll turn into a 12-pointed pattern. Uh, and then I can duplicate it again and rotate it and shrink it and create something uh, unique. So I'm going to use a mixture of the dotted lines uh, and the solid lines in this mandala. So let's choose I'll make a dotted pattern. So I'll, while that's selected, I'll select the dotted one. Uh, duplicate ring to add another ring, another layer there. Uh, and I'll select the simpler version on top there. And then I think I want a uh, kind of a long, tall pattern to kind of break this up. So I'll duplicate ring while that's selected. And then I'll scroll through here and look for something that's maybe like this. Now in this case, uh, it's still a 12-pointed uh, shape here because when you duplicate, it'll just copy the style of the previous ring. So this one was a 12-pointed one, but I want to turn this one back to a 6. So it's got all these points, so I'll go ahead and do grow pattern, and it's back to a 6. And it's a little bit rotated, so you can use these rotate scripts to uh, line it back up again however you want. Mm, this one's a little too simple. I want a more complicated one. So I might scroll down. Towards the bottom, they're going to get more and more complicated. And uh, you'll notice some of these 
uh, have a slightly different, like there's the S with the solid square or the S with the dotted square. That's how you tell the difference uh, between the dotted patterns or the solid patterns. So for example, uh, this one is the dotted line. And if you select the one above it, it's the solid line version. So I think this one is uh, ideal. Shrink that, duplicate, and uh, select something to kind of surround it. There, that's a nice one with a dotted line inside. Grow, duplicate, rotate it a little bit, and select something else. Okay, that's nice. I'll choose the dotted version. And then duplicate ring, select that one. Okay, it's looking pretty good. I think I'll add a final uh, couple layers on the outside to uh, finish it up. Uh, I'm gonna use this pattern, but I'm gonna double it. So I'll do shrink pattern. And now it's, it's kind of hidden there, uh, but now it has 12 points. We'll do grow ring. It's a little spiky. I think I'll look for something a little more geometric. Let's try. I think that's all right. Add something uh, around the edge, a border. I'll use the dotted line version. I think I might shrink that one again. No, too small. Okay. And then uh, as the very last ring, I'll uh, use one of these patterns at the bottom. This F stands for flare, and it's just a kind of a, something you might use to finish the mandala, uh, something simple, like these are some radiating lines, a radiating dotted line, various things like that. Um, I think my favorite one is actually the radiating lines. Let's rotate it. Okay. And then when you're happy with what the mandala looks like, you can make some fine adjustments uh, before we clean it up. Like I want to make this a little bigger. So I'll select that ring and grow it. And then I'll select the dotted pattern there too and grow that one. Grow that one a bit too. And this one. So I'm happy with this mandala, um, and at this point, I'll use the cleanup line script, uh, and that'll make all the lines the same thickness and uh, expand everything. And then I can also, um, I want to add one of those uh, 31 sacred geometry symbols that I also included with this. I want to copy one over and add it to the middle here. So I'm going to open that up. So I'll go to File, Open, um, navigate back to that folder uh, that you unzipped. Uh, here we go. And uh, this is the file, 31 Sacred Geometry Vector Elements. So we'll open that one. And it looks like this. I just put them all on uh, one artboard here. And you can choose which one you want uh, and then copy it over. So I think, let's see what would look good with this one. I think this design is pretty sharp. So I think it would look nice with a sort of a contrasting, uh, less, uh, more, more of a smooth thing in the middle here. So I'll look for one that's got a lot of circles. I think that's nice. So I'll select that uh, and then copy it and paste it here. And you can move that to the center. If you want, you can use the align tools and that'll line it up right in the middle. And it's a little big, so I'll shrink it. Let's see. I like that. Okay. And uh, you can select everything at this point and change the stroke width. So I can put a 2 in there, for example, uh, and it'll make everything a little bit bolder. And then I can also customize, because this isn't grouped, so I can select the individual parts. Like if I want to make this ring bolder, I can select it, and I'll give it a 3-point stroke and enter it like that. And uh, if at any point you make a mistake with this, 
uh, you can do the undo cleanup lines. It'll delete all this and then uh, replace it back uh, with a live one that where the brushes are still applied. Just it'll basically roll it back uh, to before you used this cleanup line script. So make a few more bolder lines. This adds a nice uh, kind of variation. And these uh, mandala centers are grouped. So if you want to make something in the mandala uh, center or the uh, geometry symbol, if you want to make something bolder, uh, you'll need to go into the group. And you can do that by just double clicking it. So while this is selected, I'll just quickly click it twice. And now I'm inside the group. And I can select a part that I want to make uh, bolder. In this case, I'd like that to be a uh, three-point stroke. And I might grow it a little bit too. So we have, we've got some uh, more room. There we go. Okay, make this bolder, I think. Three. Okay, and if you're happy with the dotted lines, you can just leave it as it is. Uh, but uh, I'll show you how to edit those if you want to. This is totally optional. You can do this, select dotted lines. It'll quickly select every live dotted line, and then you can edit that uh, just like you normally do. So you'll go to the stroke menu, or you can find the stroke menu also in window, uh, and then scroll down to stroke here. And the stroke menu looks just like this. And uh, this is where you can control the dashed line or the dotted line. So I'll double click that twice. If they have a different stroke, this check mark may be checked, it may not be checked. But if you just click it a few times, it'll uh, even everything out, make everything the same. Uh, and then uh, let's zoom in here so we can get a better look. It'll make changes to the dotted line live. Um, so I'll change this like I think that they need a little bit more space in between they're a little uh, close together so I'll change the gap from a three point to a four point maybe a little more five point and you can see the space between them is uh, much larger now uh, I think I'll make the uh, dashes to the black part a little bit thinner as well a little bit shorter so I'll select dotted lines and then dash and I'll lower that to two points and you can see now the black line is a little bit shorter okay pretty happy with that I'll zoom out and uh, once you're happy with your mandala uh, you can export this but I recommend you do that in a different document because this has this kind of a background here uh, so we'll select this uh, and we'll copy it and then I'll make a new document and we'll do a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. There we go. Uh, paste it in and it'll look just like this. Uh, and we can scale it up. Uh, you can scale it with the corners, but I recommend uh, scaling it with these tools uh, just because it'll maintain the ratio of the line thickness. Sometimes, depending on your settings, menu settings, scaling a shape won't change the line thickness or in some cases it will but if you use this it'll always change the line thickness and uh, keep it relative to the actual size here okay a little bit close to the edge shrink it there so you can export this if, if you're happy with this black and white mandala you can just export this by going to file save for web uh, and then saving it just like this uh, you could save it as a png or as a jpeg uh, depends on your use. I think uh, JPEG will work fine for most most uses. Uh, and then you can change the resolution, uh, make it a huge image, and embed it in your PDF or your coloring book or your design file or whatever. And then you'd save that just like this. I uh, don't want to save it right now because I want to show you uh, how to color these. So if you're happy with black and white, just export it as it is. But if you want to color this mandala, uh, then you can select it here and go to uh, Object, Rasterize, and uh, CMYK is fine, high resolution, white background. Okay, and now it's turned this mandala into an image. And then from this, uh, we can live trace it and then color that. So while this image is selected, you'll have this option appearing up here. And if you select that little black arrow next to it, it's a drop down menu. Uh, you can select the black and white logo uh, setting here. That'll take a second. That usually does a pretty good job. Uh, we'll expand it. And now it's back to vector again. 
but now it's just made of black and white shapes. There's no strokes, no lines. It's just black and white shapes, different sizes. And uh, it has a white background. So you can't tell on this artboard, but if I move it off the edge of the artboard, uh, you can see um, it's basically uh, just white and black shapes. And it's grouped together. So if I go to Object, Ungroup, uh, this will let me select different connected parts like that. Uh, so what we'll do um, is we'll delete the outside. We don't want that anymore. We'll j now we just have black on the outside. I'll move it all the way off the artboard so you can uh, get a better idea. It's hard to tell with the white background. There we go. So I've deleted that outside white part here. And this is where I can select these individual shapes like this one. And I'll hold shift while I do this so I can do a multiple select. Just like that and that. Uh, and then I could go up to my swatches and select a different color, just like that. Um, if, you want Il if you want Illustrator to help you select, say, all the white, for example, or all the black, uh, you could select it, uh, the color that you want here. Just select one, and then you can go to select same uh, fill color. And that'll look through the whole document, and it'll select everything that's the same as uh, the shape you selected first. So in this case, it's gone and selected all the white. Uh, if you want to select all the black, you can do the same thing. So I'll select a little sample of the black, and we'll go to Select, Same, Fill Color. And now all the black is selected. Uh, and this is how you can make the uh, white mandalas that I show in the preview images. Uh, so while the black is selected, uh, I'll copy that, Control-C, and then paste it here. And uh, it's not grouped. So you can grab each individual part. I don't want that, so I'm going to select it all and group it so it's easier to move it around. There, now when I grab any piece, the whole thing will move. Uh, and then I can change the color to white. So here, now we've got a, uh, instead of a black outline, now we've got a white mandala. Uh, and you could add this to the galaxy background or whatever, and you'd have the same kind of an image that I showed in the uh, preview images. There. So that's pretty much it. Once you... Um, once you color your mandala, I'll group it here. Once you color the parts, you know, whatever you want, uh, then you'd export it the same way as before. You'd go to File, Save for Web, uh, and then export it just like this. So uh, that's pretty much it. I hope this is a pretty good overview about how you can use the uh, Sacred Geometry Edition. Um, if you have any questions, the best way to uh, reach me is in that email that's in the folder you downloaded, in the README file. Uh, or you can send me a message directly on Creative Market. Other than that, guys, uh, thanks for your support, and thanks for watching.